Is scuba diving on your bucket list? Well, let me tell you, it's one of the world's riskiest sports. Scuba divers with utter enthusiasm continue to explore these caverns for decades and have pushed the boundaries back thousands of meters while discovering some truly remarkable treasures. But in this world, whenever there is light, there is also darkness. Cave diving tragedies are happening more frequently. And today, we are here with one of the scariest stories, the Devil's Story. Stay tuned till the end to have a virtual drive through this video. Devil's Eye is a circular aperture that is 20 feet wide and 20 feet deep. The entrance to a little elaborately painted cavern is at the bottom. Certified divers are allowed to enter the cavern and explore it as far as they can see utilizing the light that is present. Three distinct springs, Devil's Eye, Devil's Ear, and Devil's Spring Little Devil, are located in the Devil's Spring system and collectively they produce close to 80 million gallons of water every day. There is a stringent no lights policy in effect at Ginny Springs. Only certified cavern or cave divers may use dive lights and enter the water at the Devil Spring system. As a result, inexperienced divers are kept out of any location where their lack of knowledge, expertise, and specialized gear could land them in trouble. One will immediately notice two sunken ships. Each one of them contains a chest. Swim quickly through the wreck on the right, grab the first chest, and avoid the jellyfish as you go. Next, swim through the opening at the top of the wreck on the left to reach the second chest. Use the nearest air barrel by popping up. After that, proceed a little distance inside the tunnel to return to the exterior close to the diving bell. The location is called the Big Room, which is roughly 800 feet into Devil's Eye. Low and inky ceilings are present. The floor, which is covered with muck and silt, appear to be rising and engulfing us. But wait for a while, as in between a horrifying story took place. And in this part of the video, we will be going to show you a terrible judgment of destiny. On August 8, 2013, a deadly accident occurred in a Florida cave. Caledon, Ontario native Carlos Fonseca, was scuba diving in Florida's Ginny Springs Devil's Eye Cave system. Mr. Fonseca had been diving for around four years and was side mount full cave trained as well as Trimex certified. He received the Wakala Award for leading secure cave dives. Through the eye in the Santa Fe River, the team reached the Devil Springs Cave system. They had traveled about 400 feet upstream and were halfway between the park bench and the Hill 400 when Mr. Fonseca started having a seizure and eventually passed out. At a depth of around 85 feet, the partial pressure of oxygen was about 3.6, which led to oxygen poisoning. To increase his depth of penetration into the cave, Mr. Fonseca was getting ready to use a stage bottle that was an 80 cubic foot aluminum tank that was permanently and visibly labeled with O2 oxygen and Mod 20 which is maximum operating depth 20 feet. The victim was ready to use an oxygen bottle at a depth that was thought to be unsafe, and his team members noticed this and interrogated him about it. As indicated by the sufferer, the oxygen bottle was designed to be utilized down to a maximum operational depth of 20 feet. Having a fully equipped mixed blend station at home, Mr. Fonseca retorted that he had filled the bottles himself and was aware that they were inflated with air. His team members decided that it would be simpler and more direct to bring the victim out of the ear than back through the eye. They did this by taking him through the gallery, a roomy passageway that passes one restriction. As they pulled Mr. Fonseca through the difficult 20-minute cave exit, his comrades were keeping an eye on his face to make sure his nose was pinched, to make sure his regulator was in his mouth and to see if he was breathing. And later, sadly, before a potential heart arrest, Mr. Fonseca started breathing twice on the way out of the cave and once at the surface. Other divers, including cave instructors, assisted in getting Mr. Fonseca to the shore as the group screamed for help and started CPR cardiopulmonary resuscitation. After being brought alive to the hospital, Mr. Fonseca was eventually declared dead. In front of Sheriff's Department personnel, a cave instructor who participated in the rescue effort later performed an analysis of the tanks. According to analysis, the single-stage bottle contained 98% oxygen. At the time of the seizure, at a depth of approximately 85 feet, the partial pressure of oxygen was around 3.5, which led to oxygen poisoning. An analysis determined that the double steel tanks on the back contained 30% oxygen. The report from the Gilcrest Country Medical Examiner has still not been made public, and the sheriff's office is remaining silent. Several witnesses, as well as Carlos's diving companions, speculated that Carlos may have breathed the incorrect gas combination. Pure oxygen is toxic below 6 meters, as you can see. Divers only breathe it when they are barely below the surface to reduce decompression times. Some speculate that Carlos might have accidentally chosen the wrong tank and breathed pure oxygen at depths of more than 20 meters. 
That triggered a seizure that ultimately led to his death. This brings us to the end of the video. Hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel to show us your support. And don't forget to press the icon. See you at the next one. Until then, peace.